The Detroit Lions offseason plan has become crystal clear, and it's all about flexibility and drafting well. The Lions have 39 of their own players that are free agents. They have $50 million in cap space, so they're going to use that flexibility to get impact free agents. They're going to draft well and stay flexible for the future. And Brad Holmes has done an awesome job of keeping us flexible all while drafting well. Our top 10 most impactful players all were drafted. They're not free agents, so continue to build through the draft and stay flexible. We'll break all that down right now. Let's take a look at it. 39, right? They're, on the active roster, there's 53 guys. So this is talking about practice squad and everybody. I mean, there's a, everybody's involved in this. So, I mean, it, it goes up way past the 53, more like 80, 90 guys, I think, are all in this bucket, if you will. Um, but 40 of them, right? So almost half of our team is is um, free agents. And it's that's perfect. You you want that. You want that flexibility. We can bring them back, but you don't have to. And so Brad Holmes is really big on that. And I think it's I think it's really good. So let's look at the 20 unrestricted free agents. And you'll see as we go through this why this is so valuable because you'll see half of these guys. It's like, yep, thank you. See ya, right? <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater, perfect. You came in, you were a backup quarterback. We were able to draft a guy. Thank you. See ya. Nate Sudfeld, bye. Question marks here with these two guys, but Again, we can we we as the team, I say we, the the Detroit Lions can dictate what they want to do um with these guys versus all right, he's back. You know, if they want to bring him back, they can. Uh the backup tight end, the the guard, I mean the the tackles, maybe one of those guys. Here's the the area where the Lions have to be smart and figure out Jonah Jackson, Graham Glasgow's a year older. Do you extend Jonah Jackson? I don't think you do just because his injuries have not outweighed his production or excuse me, his production have not outweighed his injuries. He's just kind of always injured Vitae, We know is gone. Um, that was a, one of those bad signings from the Patricia era. Brad Holmes did his best to kind of mitigate that with a reworked contract, but never was able to get on the field. Alu-Alu, I mean, maybe, but look at that right here. Boom, boom, goodbye, goodbye. Maybe one of the Acquire brothers, I don't know. Charles Harris, though, man, never really could get it going. Jalen reeves Maben's really good. It, you know, again, I, I don't have to go through all these, but you can see Mosley, man, injured. Vildor, maybe bring you back. Will Harris, maybe, will we finally say goodbye to Will Harris? I don't, I don't know, because I, I don't, he always finds his way back on the team. C.J. Gardner-Johnson. I'm just going rapid fire of guys I think will be gone. I think C.J. Gardner-Johnson is gone. Badgley, I think, is gone. McQuaid comes back. Great job long, long snapping. But I think there's a lot of this bottom of the roster turnover that just happens every year. And the Lions like to bring back their own guys, which I agree with that. I agree with that because, you know, you know what you have here. But you can see how a lot of those guys are going to be gone. And it's Brad Holmes going to try to upgrade them, right? Then there's six street free agents, and this is where they're practice squad guys that did not get a futures contract. We looked at those guys um, a couple of videos ago that, that are coming back, practice squad guys. But again, same thing. These guys are all gone. David Blau, see ya. The running back out of Minnesota, Cabinda. I thought that was interesting. He's here, but I mean, we didn't really use him a lot. That's a roster spot. Schofield, again, Julian Aquara, same thing buy i mean they're not all gonna go but a lot of these guys are then let's go down to um restricted free agents brock wright i mean you can just see this is that kind of that depth piece of the roster that's all ready to be turned over so that's a good thing that's a good thing craig reynolds zonovan knight i mean these chase lucas so ton of guys really good so what does that mean now you can go to the free agency tracker i got this um filtered out with defensive ends you can kind of see who's available and classic free agency right is these guys are all late 20s chase young is only 24 25 but his effort and you've seen some of the things that he's he's just it's just not there and he's going to want a lot of money he's one of those classic dns that's just going to want more than he's worth so you can see it before we're like, all right, we got to sign a defensive end. Everyone says that, and I totally agree. But look at what you know, you got our own guys, Charles Harris, Romeo Quara, 
so we wouldn't take them right so and this is this is kind of filtered based on what they made last year so you you have to kind of get down here and look at these guys that are still kind of three million dollars a year but they're 30 years old 30 years old brian burns that'd be awesome to get him he's he's only 25 be 26 when the season starts like that's a guy you you can target all day there's J- Jadavion Clowney. He kind of reminds me of um, Chase Young. Jadavion Clowney's always wanted more money than than what he's worth. Point is, we've got money because we look at it. We've got $47, 48000000 dollars to use in cap space. So the Lions have flexibility. And so, again, you've got that. But, again, it goes back to the number one thing is drafting well. You look at our top players. They were all drafted because free agency, they're just not – there's no home runs there. And, you know, you get carried away and you find the big name, but what are they? They're 29, high-priced. And it's like, why didn't their other team sign them? Because they're too old, too expensive, or a combination of of both. So let's go to – I thought the sideline report did a nice job on their uh, mock draft here. They kind of nailed it. This title, what they said, targeting needs without hesitation. Brad Holmes has said he does not draft for need. You draft the best player that you can possibly find when it's your turn to pick. (laughs) And I think he has done that the first two years. But now, you know, we don't need a tight end, right? What if the best tight ends of it, you know, so... I know why he did that and it was the right thing to do, but now we we have little pockets that need to be filled versus just picking the guy. So pick 29, which is awesome. Um, we've drafted in the top 10 for how many years in a row there. So pick 29, perfect. Love being down there because that difference in player is not as great as you think. I mean, it just really isn't. You've seen the the Steelers, the Ravens draft down here for years and they're fine right so it's, it's way more about culture you're able to find the the right player so general manager brad holmes made an effort to address lions secondary last year emmanuel mosley and cj cj gardner johnson <clears throat> it worked but it didn't it still needs to be the secondary cornerback is the number one need again this offseason wouldn't that be awesome to have brad holmes find the equivalent of sam laporta but at corner what i mean by that is just like a star an absolute best tight end in the game i mean he would if you did a if you did a draft of tight ends he would be number 1 cuz he's a he's a rookie and he's only going to get better so you could find that equivalent at corner would change everything so that's the first pick i love it second round edge player trice out of washington exactly what we need we need a corner and an edge that's what that's what man it would just be awesome to see what kind of player we could get and then third round we go guard remember we looked at it guard is a is a, is a spot where we've got free agencies graham glasgow is getting older we know what an offensive line can do and so i would not be shocked at all if brad holmes um targets this even earlier than the third round because it's so important and so keep an eye on that and then we we looked at this guy Let, let's look at it here again i mean he he just at guard too is just so nice guard center stonewalled him gets in a little angry lsu guy oh boy love it now let's look a little bit later in the draft third round again remember i have two third round picks a wide receiver. Now, wide receiver, we've got to continue to watch that this offseason. That continues to be a, a spot that we just keep talking about that I just don't know if we need a wide receiver, but it does feel like we're one wide receiver away from our offense being really good. But I would like to see us take a guard more than a wide receiver. So that's all. All right. So Thrash, love his name, and he just continues to be great at the at the senior bowl. Let's take a look at it here. Oh, nice. Nice catch. Nice catch. Love it. Another corner in the fifth round. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we double up on, on corner for sure. So you can kind of see it. Let's go to the last round. Sixth round. 
a kicker. Oh man, kicker. I don't know. I hate drafting a kicker, but wouldn't that be nice to have a good kicker? And then a defensive tackle in the seventh round. So you guys see it. Lions have the flexibility. They have the cap space. They've got a great general manager. They've got great young players. The franchise is as healthy as it's ever been. That's what's crazy. Ever been. The Lions were half away from going to the Super Bowl. So at worst case, and this is what I've always said, man, it's hard. It's hard to get to the NFC Championship game. There's a lot of talk about will they ever get back there again? Who knows? Nobody knows. But the point is the Lions are going to be playing meaningful football late into the season for a Oh, a long time what, I mean, for as long. I mean, it's the NFL. Anything can happen, but it just feels like they're going to be playing some meaningful games well past Thanksgiving. And that's all I've ever wanted. I hate when we go that that Thanksgiving games like meaningless and they're three and nine. Oh, let me know your thoughts in the comments and we'll see all of you on the next one.